Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, July 10, 2022 Council meeting. Our first item on the agenda is a call to order and arrive with a release. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number two on the agenda is a sunshine statement and roll call by our municipal clerk, Dr. Robbins. We need to update the announcement of our council as well as the provisions of the open public meetings for this meeting of July 5th, 2022. That is the time for the summer year on January 5th. That teleconference is noted on the official email website on June 30th, 2022, on the public bulletin board and the city. And then after five earlier in the coming week, 28, 20th, Mr. Roll, Mayor Sinento. President. President Leo. Here. Mrs. Albertson. Here. Dr. Dunn. Here. Mr. Olson. Here. Mr. Smithman. Here. Mr. Van. Here. At this moment in time, I have a motion to second to accept the meeting minutes of our June 20th, 2022 council meeting. Move it and say something. Second, Leo. Comments or questions, petitions, redactions? Yes, uh, Dr. Robinson, I sent over a number of petitions. Um, um, so that we could amend them next meeting so that we vote every. I didn't send you take the vote. Okay. Um, so we'll go for each one individually. So our first 
Public Hearing Document Board is 2022-15, amended to del redevelop a uh, downtown redevelopment plan. I have a motion to accept. Move it, Sigma. Can I take these to the public? They are. Yeah, thank you. So this is an improvement to, or addition, amendments to our uh, downtown redevelopment plan. Um, specifically in the area of Bellsburg. Uh, So specific improvements such as landscape areas, pervious pavers, um, and a transition area between, uh, between uh, Stanford and Middlesex and uh, Jackson and Plainfield border, what would be known as a transition area, which is stopping for development, the all residential or mixed use. Um, so that would be the mandatory they were introduced at the uh, seventh meeting. Um, meeting, um, and then it went to our planning board meeting in 2007. It made comments and recommendations um, specifically related to full uh, residential property in those areas. This area has the first floor should still continue to be a streetscape of the entire downtown. accessories such as a lobby or fitness or for the uh, properties across the board. Um, so at this moment in time, we will open this portion of the public right comments and questions in 2022-15. Public, we cannot review the public now. We have a question pertaining just to the today. Okay, closing that portion of the meeting to the public. And now we questions from council. Yes, I just have one. Um, with the exception of non native cherry trees, I'm just curious. Uh, Behind that, that is that a street is on the front, such as the tree out of the But because cherry trees have historically been from choice.
לא.
Any other comments or questions from the public before we go over to council? I have one. Yes. Um, I'm from board. One who I know Washington Avenue. Yes. Yes. So in your case, the entirety of it would assist you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So long as you're following the the uh, redevelopment plan. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, as long as you're in the development area. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, comments, questions? Good to go. So we're going to open up this to the council now. Any comments or questions pertaining to this report? There are there are also exemptions for new construction as well. It is set up differently, and it requires a tax agreement, and it will actually be coming before the council for those. It's similar to the financial agreement, except for this would be five years, and wouldn't be the 10, 20, 30 years that we want to see on a larger development. And, then, and you'll have that ability to determine probably through negotiations with that with that property owner, the manner in which there's three different methods of um, mm -hmm. of the exemption. And so it's a little more involved, but yes, it is. It's not as simple as like an existing improvement, like the examples we saw. Mm -hmm. Correct. Approved by tax assessor. Right, right. Through the tax assessor's office, correct. Again, this, the five year is trying to be a simplified method for I view it as current small property owners who want to jump in on the revitalization of Denella and improve their property. Um, any other questions from yeah. council? For some businesses that have two businesses, it would be separate. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Mrs. Rios. Yes. Mrs. Rios. Yes. Yes. This is one thing I don't know. I don't know how to do this. There we go. Thank you, Council and Public. Uh, so now I'm in a renaissance. I keep saying I think this is going to continue our renaissance. I see some property owners from our downtown right here that I hope take advantage of this. And well, Tiana, I'm going to ask one last question. I'm sorry that I failed to remember. If a property owner made an improvement, let's say this year, would they still be able to take advantage of this? No, this is going to start for 2023. Right? In the ordinance, it says 2023. Right? Yeah. Misunderstood. I apologize. Okay, go. Next up is 2022-17 Supplemental Railroad Avenue Colbert Bond Ordinance. I have a motion and a second. Okay. Second, second. This ordinance is related to uh, the Railroad Avenue Colbert Project, which is on the uh, on South Avenue uh, near, I should say, between Lasky and some of the industrial complexes. It's a culvert project that the town has been working on for several years, and it will help alleviate the flow of water, which hopefully in the grand scheme can help us get some properties out of the uh, flood map, but most importantly, keep properties from flooding. So we had to come up with additional funding uh, for this, um, and so that's all part of what we're doing. We had to get you know, a grant that is available to us. We had to go through some legal issues with the property owners, on the uh, north side of the property, we finally got through that, and uh, which postponed some things. But uh, this is a much needed project for the town. So, with that, I will open up this portion of the meeting to the public for any comments or questions pertaining solely to 2022 17. Yes. yes, sir. Please state your name and address. Is that like for North Bay Extension behind the houses? You know, how like, is it a property of the railroad or going to clean that out? 
No, it's, it's a completely new culvert underneath the train tracks um, following the body of work at the front of the stand into the uh, pedestal house property. So that's the location. It's right at the end of your street. Yeah. It's a commercial lot at the end of your street. Yeah. But it's running from Middlesex. And you're going to culvert, going to be between Middlesex. Any other comments from the public? Please state your name and address. Okay, without hearing any, uh, we'll, we'll close that portion of the meeting. We'll close that portion of the meeting. Any comments or questions? Without hearing any, we'll close that. Can you take a roll call, please? Mrs. Albertson? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Paul John? Yes. Mr. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmund? Yes. Mr. Vanderbilt? Yes. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, if I may, just on the record, I think I misunderstood your question. Um, you could do improvements in 2022. The exemption wouldn't start until 2023 for that five year tax exemption. Okay. I'm not sure which question you were asking me, but that's good. Okay. Probably always better happy to hear that. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, that's where I was. Yeah, that's where I was. Thank you. Um, okay, next up is item number six. Uh, presentation by developer for 501 North Avenue, which is the Triangle Garage. And I think this is uh, another presentation and conversation around exciting times in Vanilla. Um, so this will be a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I know the attorney is here, right? And our architect is joining her. Let's go out there so we can see it. Unmuted, right? So I, I'm speaking for the listeners to hear. There we are. Let's see if we can raise this up just a little bit. Put it up more in front of you. Sadrino, can you uh, can you hear me and unmute yourself? Good evening, this is Kevin Sadrino. I can hear you. Kevin, this is Michael Silbert. Um, so, can you see the PowerPoint presentation? I can't, but I have the presentation in front of me. Okay, so I'm going to be controlling the presentation at the uh, the council meeting. I can see the share there screen now. No problem. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay to go. All right, so uh, good evening, council members, members of the public. My name is Michael Silver, and I'm an attorney at the law firm of the Associate Council of I am here this evening representing the redeveloper 501 North Avenue Urban Renewal LLC. Uh, this is a mixed use redevelopment of a site located at 501 North Avenue, Block 50, Lots 1 and 2 and Block 65, Lot 1. The property is, of course, located in a redevelopment area. The project uh, will consist of 47 dwelling units, of which seven are the affordable units that will meet the requirements set for the Uniform Housing and Affordability Code. Uh, there will be 31 bedroom units, 15 two bedroom units, and two three bedroom units. A total of 53 parking spaces will be provided on the site. And the project will also make a payment in lieu of parking for the borough for any deficiency to see the parking provided, the amount required under the terms of the redevelopment plan for the area. This project will also include approximately 3,800 square feet of retail space on the ground floor, 
assistant with the commercial producer of the area. Joining us this evening remotely to provide further information as to the design and layout of the proposed project is Mr. Kevin Setembrino. Mr. Setembrino is the founding principal of Setembrino Architects and is a registered architect with over 20 years of professional practice experience. Uh, also joining us remotely are the redevelopers. Um, there's any questions we cannot address it, they'll be able to address it. Um, Appropriate at this time, I would uh, turn it over, turn the floor over to Mr. Setembrino. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for having me uh, this evening. Uh, if I can ask you to forward the slide, please, to the site plan, I'll go through that, please. All right. Uh, what's your? What's, uh, thank you very much. Uh, what you have on the screen before you is um, the approximate uh, site. As the mayor mentioned, it's um, on the corner of uh, North and Madison Avenue. And it, um, it is the aggregation of um, several sites, as you did mention in, uh, in your initial uh, presentation. It is also the, the partial street vacation of uh, a portion of Bound Brook Road, as you can see uh, triangularly in the middle of the site. Um, go ahead, please. All right, uh, so let me go through the site plan with you. Um, in the site plan, uh, as uh, you had mentioned, there is approximately um, 3,800 square feet of commercial space. That is the items that are that are shown in blue uh, in the um, in the site plan itself. Uh, along North Avenue, you see two items in uh, blue at about 800 square feet apiece. And then on the right-hand side, vertically along Madison Avenue, you'll see two squares in blue. Uh, retail space is at about 1,100 square feet apiece. The um, the setbacks from the curb line, the uh, ordinance requires a 16 feet minimum from the curb line setback. Uh, this provides a 16 feet setback from the property line or 28 feet setback from the curb line. So we are exceeding the, um, the redevelopment ordinance requirements uh, in, that, uh, in that requirement. Number one, number two, uh, you'll see the light tan area along North Avenue and along Madison Avenue and the trees as well. So we did put in Trees, I believe they were 50 feet on center to meet the ordinance requirements. Additionally, um, in the at the corner of North and Madison, we've opened up the um, retail area to kind of open up the corner to pedestrians. We wanted to make sure we included um, a pedestrian way or pedestrian improvements to the area as well, in addition to the development. Uh, so that tan area, you'll see a walk through space uh, that pedestrians can walk through uh, from the corner of North and Madison. Uh, underneath uh, the building into the parking area uh, in which uh, you'll have, uh, we have um, uh, 53 parking spaces. Um, what's important to note about those parking spaces is that there are 11 EV or electric vehicle uh, spaces. Three of those spaces are barrier free or handicapped accessible spaces. Um, and we do have uh, parking for bicycles as well, close to the common area. So all of these items have allowed us to reduce the parking requirements um, to 59, and as council mentioned, we do have 53 spaces. So we've gotten as many spaces as we can. We've taken advantage of um, the placement and location of electric vehicle charging stations, uh, bicycle parking as well, um, and uh, all the requirements are met for the barrier-free or handicapped spaces. What's important to note is that the ordinance uh, requires a 10% of the lot area be um, uh, list be um, relegated for um, landscaping. Um, we're required to have about 4,300 square feet. We provide about 4,400 square feet of landscaping. We have a central landscaped area in addition to some landscaping around the parking. What's important to understand about the landscaping is that um, we have we have uh, noted all of the landscape species as uh, zero scaped species, which means they require very little irrigation and they are um, natural uh, to the area. Um, so that we want to make sure we have plants that are local and that require very little um, irrigation in order to survive and thrive. And that's important with regard to some of the species selections that we've made here. Um, the, the, lastly, the areas in yellow uh, at the corner of uh, North, North and Madison are vertical circulation areas to get to the residential areas. Similarly, bottom left and bottom right, there are stairs to get out of the residential area. So I'll make two other notes here. You'll see Boundbrook uh, Road that runs uh, diagonally from uh, upper left to lower right. 
Uh, we are proposing a partial vacation of that road. Uh, that is a state-owned road. Um, and we've had preliminary meetings with New Jersey Department of Transportation, and um, they have um, given us direction with regard to what permits we need to file, uh, but they do certainly require support uh, from the municipality as well to do that partial street vacation, but they are not, uh, they, they're not stopping us from, uh, from doing it. Um, secondly, um, close to our proposed ingress and egress along Madison Avenue, we would need to propose to relocate a bus stop from New Jersey Transit. We've had a meeting with New Jersey Transit as well. They're amenable to proposed relocations of this bus stop, certainly as long as we coordinate with the mayor and council and uh, uh, get their, uh, your approval to do that relocation. Um, just to make certain that we orient everyone along the bottom of the screen to the left and to the right is the New Jersey Transit rail line, uh, the elevated rail line. Um, so although we're not required to have any setback on the rear of the property, we've tried, tried to keep that development uh, well off that, that um, uh, property line adjacent to that elevated uh, rail line. All right. Um, any, 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 other, any questions for the site plan at the moment? Kevin, I do. This is Mayor Salento. Yes, sir. Um, I have questions pertaining to the landscape and some of the crosswalks and pedestrian safety measures. So I'm going to start with pedestrian safety measures. Um, the ingress and then the egress and ingress. Hold on one second. Uh, the crossings on Bamberg Road and then along Madison Avenue, where the property has traffic coming in and then traffic coming in and out. Are there going to be crosswalks there? Uh, Mayor, there'll, there'll be there'll be crosswalks and there'll be some type of a pedestrian warning um, uh, signals with regard to vehicular ingress and egress. We'll work that out and develop that uh, at the planning board application uh, with our civil engineer uh, that we'll bring on board for this as well. Yes, we just don't have them sp specified at the moment. Okay, and then in consideration for the crossing of Madison Avenue where there's current crosswalks, is that something for the developers? will consider keeping in terms of how it comes to and from the property on the intersection of what is Railroad Avenue? Uh, I'll, I'll certainly let uh, defer to council on that, but uh, we can make any modifications that you require that'll make this development uh, workable for this pro this location. Okay, and then my last comment on this slide is pertaining to the landscaping. Some of the landscaping that's along the uh, commercial properties, with, if, if council agrees and then planning board move some of that greenery towards the curb area to kind of create a, a safety line between the street and pedestrians walking. It also may open up some of the sidewalk space for outdoor dining for their uh, the tenants that will go into this property. And I think that's an excellent idea. We'd be happy to do that. We take that, um, that landscaping adjacent to the retail along North and along Madison. We'd put it in, in planters uh, that would be bollards. Um, so those uh, there'd be uh, vehicular bollards to present the prevent cars from going through it, and to your point, Mayor, uh, would generate some uh, some nice outdoor dining space as well. Okay, great. Thank you. That's all for me. Thank you. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, that question cut in and out. Can someone repeat that question, please? Uh, my question was around parking and um, whether who, who will be able to park here. Will they be parking for the commercial spaces, for the retail spaces, or is it for residents only? No, this is, the same with this is, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. And then the second part of that is the EV charging stations. Will those be open to the public or also just for the use of their so commercial the, so the parking is a the parking that was developed here is a requirement of the retail space uh, in, in accordance with the ordinance and a requirement of the of the residential space. To that point, there are about 3,800 square feet of commercial space, and we, we need one space per 200 square feet of gross uh, gross area um, for the for the commercial space. So commercial requires 13 spaces, and then the rest are for residential. Um, so all of the parking is specific to the retail um, users. So uh, presumably if you're, if you're a retail user, you're going into one of the stores, you can certainly park there. Um, or if you're a residential uh, user, you could use the space as well. The EV spaces, there are 11 electric vehicle charging spaces. 
and they're for um, they're specific for EV vehicles. They'll have charging charging stations at that location, um, and that that's enabled us to reduce the parking requirement um, for this project. But again, the parking here is specific to the users on the site, meaning retail and residential. Thank you. And then um, I had a question with respect to that intersection at North and Madison, and whether or not you've had any conversations or maybe requesting a conversation with the county to potentially change the light there. It's hard enough anyway to make those left-hand turns because uh, coming north uh, or south on uh, Madison Avenue, um, and now we're going to be increasing and taking away that Soundbrook Road um, and ask them to look into a, a turning signal there too. I don't know if anybody else has that's the well, council member, I can address that directly. We've been in conversation already with the DOT about turn signals at both on North Washington Avenue okay. and uh, Route 28, as well as Madison Route 28. It's, it's an NJDOT matter. Uh, the cost of the study is $250,000. The town is responsible for 25% of it. We would have to upfront $62,000. Um, as with this development and other projects, um, as we consider the financial agreement or community benefits, those are what we're considering right now is pedestrian safety for the town council. Okay, great, thank you. And then uh, similarly, we have uh, a concern is around the buses that also come down there that will, you know, now they've got to make a right-hand turn at that. We would be eliminating that route. We're already in conversation with NJGOT. We actually have a meeting with them this week. We'll probably have to consider doing a bus stop at this North Ave location on the property and coordinating some other so this way and the turn signal at north uh, south Washington avenue new market will greatly assist them and able to create that new route so once that comes we'll come to resolution and council will be able the opportunity to come okay great that's it for me public you're allowed to question on this too i have a good question um Redevelopment Council for the borough. Um, I think the question is: Is the entirety of the parking area open to the public? I understand the board. All of the, there, there's I, no. I I'm sorry. Go ahead. I understand the, the parking demand and how the number of spaces is calculated. And I think the question is: Are any of them going to be reserved for, for residents? or eliminated, yeah, right. The sign parking, how the, the parking space is going to be handled, the, the actual use of that. I, I think how the parking will be handled it hasn't been discussed with the developer yet. Uh, so these spaces just meet all the requirements of the zoning ordinance, obviously with the exception of a total of six net uh, deficient spaces. Um, whether or not they're designated um, as retail and residential is uh, is yet to be determined or discussed. Okay, so that's something we'll have to make sure it addresses the concern. Just so public is aware, this is simply just a presentation. Everything is formalized through a redevelopment agreement. 
at a later meeting and if necessary for economics of the project if there will be a financial agreement which would be at a later meeting as well. Um, so any deficiencies in parking uh, the developer has to pay into what's called a pilot payment in lieu of parking. It's a trust fund that we allocate the funds where we try and make up throughout the town other areas for parking for economy parking. So we're finding some future infrastructure improvements as well. My point, So, Mr. Sedenbrino, I don't know if you were able to hear that, but oh, council I'm sorry. member, I hear the questions from the public. Um, they're very garbled. So, so council member uh, Sander Mark just made a comment saying that essentially he's concerned that the 13 spaces spaces uh, for the commercial component of the site may may not be enough. And, and, that, and that, that's, that, that's fine. The 13 spaces were required in accordance with your ordinance. But again, keep in mind our total spaces that we're providing are 53, 59 are required. And it's uh, that six space deficiency. Uh, so it's a combination of being deficient in terms of um, commercial and residential, um, both, both in six uh, spaces net. And I understand what you're, what you're saying. And I can't generate any more spaces um, on the site. I think. Um, We've kind of uh, maxed out the parking that we can get there. Uh, it's a matter of having fewer residential spaces and more more commercial, just shifting those numbers. But I don't think we get any more spaces on the site. Mr. Sanabrino, do you envision a uh, shared parking approach to the site, meaning that the uh, hours of the commercial use will not be coincidental with the peak hours of the residential use? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Other questions, but do the next slide. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go to the next slide. Okay, thank you. So the next slide shows the second and third floors of the development. This is a three story development in accordance with the ordinance is restricted to three stories. Uh, the second and third floor, second to the left, third floor to the right are fairly identical, but for the distribution of one, two and three bedroom units. Uh, the one bedroom units are in light blue, I'm sorry, um, medium blue, if you will, on the exterior along North uh, North Avenue, predominantly, and Madison Avenue. On the interior, you see a very light blue. Those are the two bedroom units, both on the second and third floor. And on the third floor, you'll see two three bedroom units. Those are the teal color units on the interior of the courtyard. Um, so and the yellow space, of course, is the circulation and on the corner of North and Madison. So similar to where the pedestrian entry is at grade level on North and Madison, there is a common space for the residents on the second and third floor uh, that matches um, the um, pedestrian ingress and circulation area on the, on the main street level. And that's, and so th those are the floors, they're all residential units and it's fairly straightforward. Question. Okay, go on to the next slide. Very well, thank you. So this, these are the proposed elevations for the, for the project. Um, as was mentioned before, this is a three-story building, a retail on the first floor, a residential on the second and third floors. Um, and uh, when, when we looked at the elevations, the uh, North Avenue elevation is on the top uh, and the Madison Avenue elevation is on the bottom. What was important to us as designers was to um, kind of make, a, uh, make the corner an important part of the architecture. So you'll see that the corner of uh, North and Madison um, has a different type of architecture there with um, uh, pedestrian ingress at the bottom with the arched uh, ingress location that you can walk through and under. We've kind of made that roof uh, area on the corner more important and higher than any other roof area. Um, and as you move uh, along North Avenue first floor elevation and Madison Avenue uh, elevation, you'll see that the retail area has um, uh, um, uh, 
uh, it, we're, we're trying to replicate some elements of a, an old world train station. So you'll see that uh, the lower level windows are more glass for the retail. They are um, kind of etched, etched glass in the uh, curved windows above the, um, above the retail glass. We have uh, old world type uh, uh, train uh, station lights so that are hanging over those, uh, over those windows to provide some lighting for the retail areas and some street lighting as well. You have some canopies over the uh, retail ingress as well. And again, uh, we've arched uh, all of the openings, both on the corner of North and Madison and on the vehicular ingress um, on the, on, uh, the Madison Avenue uh, ingress and egress location. And again, the access drive on North Avenue um, elevation. We felt that um, the uh, arching uh, of the openings uh, are more similar to old world type, type buildings. Um, I'll get to the residential in a moment, but um, we also, this, this is a very long building, both on North and Madison, and we wanted to make sure we, we broke up the fact that the building uh, looked too long with some um, vertical elements that you'll see. We've changed the roof on the vertical elements um, between the, uh, the retail spaces. Um, on the corner of North and Madison, the uh, predominant um, uh, finish is a, is a stone veneer. Uh, to give you an, an old world feel. Uh, on the retail, it's also a stone veneer as well that matches that corner uh, elevation. And um, above the retail on the second and third floor, uh, which is where the residential is, we do have some um, composite uh, board or like a, 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 a clapboard. Um, it is composite, so it won't rust, warp, or um, discolor. Um, and we've taken the windows, we've taken double hung windows for all of the units. And again, we put in, put some um, uh, diagonal uh, mullions and muntins on them to give you a bit of an old world feel as well. So uh, we do have um, to uh, our node to be to the building being a little bit more civic in nature on a corner of North and Madison. We do have uh, an exterior clock uh, that can be read by all and potentially have some uh, chimes that may uh, may happen multiple times during the day. Uh, we haven't had that discussion with the developer yet, but we wanted to provide some elements in this building in addition to the retail and lighting and street lighting so that it feels like it sets the tone for the redevelopment area for, for Dinellon. So um, we've also shown you some colors that are um, uh, some tans and some greens and some dark uh, dark browns and reds, similar to the colors that you'll have uh, in, the, in the turn of the century development. I just have one comment, and, and where it's, the, I guess you get a last piece of the, between the brick of stone pieces. Is there any possibility, I don't, I can't see from here if there could be more defined cornices, if I'm pronouncing that right? Are you speaking of the corbels, Mayor, right? I would assume corbel, is that at the top or underneath the canopy? So, so, so corbels, uh, corbels are typically uh, masonry or some type of, uh, some type of bracket. And we would uh, we can place uh, corbels uh, below the first floor canopies or brackets, and they can be masonry or they can be uh, they can be composite brackets. But yes, uh, th those will be in and out the page, so they're difficult to see uh, in these flat elevations. But yes, we certainly will can include those. That's great. You read my mind on that, but I'm talking about the uh, the top roof line of cornices in terms of defining it out. Um, I don't know how to describe it. No, the the, the top of the roof line, we can embellish that uh, that that edge a bit, and uh, and um, certainly make that uh, cornice, if you will, a little bit more a um, little bit more authentic, a little bit more uh, detail. It's just uh, th this is a concept at the moment, so we haven't gotten into that detail yet, but we certainly will. Perfect. I think that would be a venture, especially the different. You all have to repeat that question for me, please. No, it was a statement. He was he was applauding you on this design and also on um, um, the property improvement because of 
the concern of traffic through the street and as well as mechanics does a lot of work on the street too. So he's saying this is going to be an enhancement to the community. Well, thank you so much, Mayor. We're going to be asking on the outside for a are there any balconies proposed? Uh, there's no balconies at the moment. The response was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no further comments. That was the last slide, is it not? Last slide. Okay, beautiful building. We're looking forward to how this progresses. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Kevin. Great, thank you. project to everybody. Next step that you're going to see progress is what you saw with 121.26 North. We're going to progress to a financial agreement if it's warranted by the financial project and a redevelopment agreement which gets into the specifics of the contract between the municipality and the redeveloper with regard to the redevelopment of the area. So that's when all the details will come out and uh, that will be back before the council so you'll be seeing that again soon. Thank you, Tiana. Thank you for everything you for the time. It's been a great You're welcome. Okay, there's no formal vote on this, as uh, Tiana noted. So we're going to go right into our resolution. Uh, Dr. Robbins, as normal, as you go into them, just give a moment uh, for council members to ask any questions. Thank you, Mayor. 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 Mrs. Alberson? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Bolshaw? Yes. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmon? Yes. Mr. Vandermont? Yes. Motion on number two. Uh, this amends the salary revolution. Move it, Sigma. Second, yes. Bill, would you mind just giving us a quick explanation? There. Goodbye. Consultation with the finance committee report. Uh, salary for the building maintenance uh, person, Sylvia Santa Maria. Upward. And uh, Mr. Uh, Miller's public works manager compensation is inaccurate. Stated in the original salary ordinance. I'm sorry, salary address. No questions or comments, Council? Roll call. Mrs. Albertson? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Paul John? Yes. Rios? Yes. Sigmund? Yes. Mr. Vandermark? Yes. Motion on number three. Uh, this authorizes the submission of a firefighter grant. Move it, Vandermark. Thank you, Brian. Albertson? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Paul John? Yes. Mr. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmund? Yes. Mr. Vandermark? Yes. Number four, please accept. Uh, the resignation of Ronald Safer, public works supervisor. Move it, Sigmund. Second, Albertson. Mrs. Albertson? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmund? Yes. Mr. Vanderbilt? Yes. Number five. We 
please add uh, the staff or to recreation summit. Move it, Paul Chan. Mr. Albertson? Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Paul John? Yes. Mrs. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmund? Yes. And Mark? Yes. Number six. This approves Chapter 78 policy regarding borrow employee retiree health benefit contributions. Yes. Second, Sigmund? Now, this is regarding uh, the public be aware we have our labor attorney as well. I feel elaborate more on this. Um, but basically, this requires employees effective January 1st, 2023, uh, upon retirement to begin paying into their health insurance by percentage. The tier uh, four grid, Chapter 78, um, essentially saving the town uh, money long term. But Mr. Tebo, are you on the line? Dave, Art Tebo is in the line. Can you please let him through. We're in correspondence to see if we can get on the line. Are we able to table this? Table this? Yes, we get on. Are there, well, are there any questions for Jane? My understanding that the panel that the president just said that the funding policy should not be funded by the negotiations that we've heard agreements that exist in the future, <laughs> I may mean, not be able to answer it. That's why we have. So, I'm not a man, though. Yeah, the last thing, the policy shall not speak in terms of any binding collective negotiation agreement. So, my assumption that under current contracts, for example, the CA, CBW, uh, UPA, those extend past December 31st of, of this year. So, those actually, those are the. the yeah. Right. This would be for non contracted employees and anything. That would have impact that when you negotiate with your contract. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure that. Okay. There's no questions. We can go with the vote. Okay. There. Take a roll. Oh, Art, you there? Yes, I am. Sorry. Okay. You just want to briefly summarize. Uh, what this resolution is for council. Although there were no questions, but I think just for public record, probably need to. Okay, uh, so the resolution before you dealing with retiree health benefits amends your chapter 48 of filing with the State Health Benefits Commission. Uh, what it does is it states that retirees, or I should say strike that, what it says is that eligible employees who retire on or after January 1, 2023 uh, shall contribute to the cost of their borough provided retiree health benefits at the rates established by uh, chapter 78. Um, this is an amendment to what's currently in effect, uh, which is that um, eligible retirees, those IIE who met, meet the definition of an employee who served um, enough time with the borough and has enough time in the pension system, uh, those employees who retire before January 1 of 2023 um, would continue to receive retiree benefits at no cost to them. So this amendment uh, brings the borough um, into a contribution uh, state for its uh, future retirees. Yeah, and maybe I'll just make sure that um, my question uh, is uh, my understanding is correct. The last part of the, the last statement of this says uh, policy shall not duplicate the terms of any binding budget negotiation agreement. So my understanding of reading that is that those agreements would uh, supersede this chapter 78. So for example, our current um, uh, PBA agreement is supersede this. 
right? This, this does not impact on groups who are covered by collective negotiations agreement. This this applies to um, all other uh, borough employees who would meet the eligibility requirements for retiree benefits. Okay. Sorry, we're just getting communication. Uh, so the answer to your question that apparently the sound is not working and public or IT saying it is working. I'm trying to try IT on this one. Uh, no more disruption. Okay. It is answer your question. Good. Okay. Roll call, please. Yes. Okay. Mrs. Yes. Dr. Dunn? Yes. Old John? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Mr. Van Der Yes. Sorry. Thank you, Art. You're good to go. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Next up on our agenda is the uh, resolution for transfer of unspent TBDG funds to more fresh park groups. I have a motion to second. Move in. Okay, I know this has been a long time coming, but we've been waiting for the county. I know that uh, there are people in town saying that the park are on a boat somewhere and the supply chain is mad. We haven't gotten to that point yet. We haven't even proved it yet. Um, but this is uh, regarding community development block grants that have been unspent. We're allocating, we're repurposing those funds with the approval from the county who has oversight of that program for improvements to a new playground at Warcraft Park. That will be incorporative of a city open bond that we have, as well as a developer's prior uh, donation to the town for a park improvement, which is specifically to Warcraft. So all in all, we should have the funds with the approval of this. I know Rec Commission has already approved their recommendation for a playground set over there. So I'm hoping August 1st we can approve it. Gallagher's pump station to see if it would take the capacity. Um, so 
from that assessment, uh, the council will have to consider a future date financial agreement on what would be called the RAD bond uh, to fund those and for those excessive cost of taxpayer and dollars, um, which would then be case of the developer's agreement. So that's basically it. Council, any questions? Okay. Mrs. Albertson? Yes. Dr. John? Yes. Paul John? Yes. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigmon? Yes. Mr. Vandermark? Yes. I'll go now with the consent of tender portion. As our custom, uh, we're going to take a call to a single motion and second and roll call. If you'd like to take any out, it will be so. Otherwise, give you a moment or so. Then I'll take a motion. No others to be removed. I have a motion and a second on remaining consent. Second, Albertson. Take the roll. Mrs. Albertson? Yes. Dr. John? Yes. Mr. Bolshaw? Yes. Mr. Rios? Yes. Mr. Sigma? Yes. Mr. Vanderborn? Yes. Programs throughout August. 
to the library to register or sign up online. I like the special program this month includes key movies to stay at 1 p.m. The ocean theme in style works on it's being exploring today, July 7th, ages 9 through 12. A visit from the Triple Pack Zoo on Tuesday, July 27th at 1 p.m., ages 3 to 12. Registration is required to meet the Vanilla Art and Culture. Please enjoy free music in the park. This Thursday, July 7th, and it's July 21st, at Washington Park at 7 p.m. Also, on July 23rd, Adam Theater will be performing Greek. Municipal Lions. Um, what a wonderful time we had at Hill Thank you, Mayor, so much for joining us. That's it. And then our supervisory, we love um, being able to support local businesses. We will be at the National Lighthouse in August. Our overdose awareness ceremony is August 31st, 30 at Washington Park. Mellon Town Council Station will have an anniversary ceremony for Weather Tech at 11 a.m. on July 23rd. All are invited. Actually, this one number of days. Stage 2018, volunteers are always needed. A volunteer application is online or contact one of us. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Councilmember Vanderbar. Sure. Anything to report tonight? There's something about the 18th. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, recreation. Recreation Summer Camp started on June 29th. Today we signed the bed and the campers learned about dinosaurs. Next week, we to take a road trip to Colonial Park in Somerset County. Many golf and appointments. There's still a few spots that are available for camp. Anyone interested can email Alex Miller. That's I'm Katie Miller at Mellonboro.com. Uh, the recreation department is one step closer to having the new recreation website up. The new website will include online payments, email blasts, and calendar for all recreation and all events. And lastly, a movie, the senior movie night that day will be July 18th at some place. And that's part of the book. How old do you have to be in person? That would be a senior. You know, it's 55 and up. I believe it's 55 and up. Uh, to come with us uh, to the council. 
uh, later this year with a proposal. Uh, and finally, the parking authority, the next parking authority meeting will be next week, next Wednesday, July 13th at 7th. Sounds good. Councilmember Stigman, anything to report? Uh, yes, the uh, DPW crew has again been maintaining the daily cleaning of downtown and all borough properties and parks. They've been watering plants throughout downtown, including the new pop up park. They are continuing the three sweep schedule, uh, lawn maintenance, all the parks and borough properties. Uh, they removed brush from the Highland Planters at Columbia Park. Uh, they prepped Washington Memorial Park for the high school graduation. They cleared catch basins throughout the borough, inspected and cleared streams, and they ran uh, three roll off boxes to the zone. And that's all for DCW. Next is the Mayor's Traffic and Pedestrian Safety Task Force. I've added a uh, printout for everyone to take a look at. We are looking to start a walking school bus program. Uh, one early step of that is gauging interest from our community. So we would like to put out a survey uh, to collect information uh, about who's interested and uh, if they would be willing to help. So we just wanted to bring this before council and just get everyone's approval um, before we do start sending it out uh, through our various methods. Is this some of the dates are off? Yes, the dates are going to change. <laughs> Or the summer group, survey real quickly. Um, so basically, we are just trying to get information on who is interested uh, and if they want to participate as a walker or if they want to become a walking school bus driver and what they they would be able to uh, actually help out and uh, how many children they have in the school. Uh, and how many they would be walking with. Uh, so again, this is just preliminary, trying to figure out if when we start, we have essentially one bus route, we have two bus routes, if we have a central collection location that we then walk from. Uh, so again, this is just early stuff, gauging interest from our community. Is there any specific question? I have one. Yeah. What's the time frame of the survey? How are you? How are you? Um, we are going to be dispersing it through our various social media, email. We're going to be sending it to the school um, and having the PTO in the school actually send stuff out uh, to their contact list so we don't have direct access to the business. Any questions or comments? We get a general consensus for the traffic and the car. Does everyone know what a walking school bus is? I would just see how we coordinate this with uh, cannabis one as well as the master plan. So it's not, but we get to gate around survey. Okay. I'm hoping with recreation, that we can put the new email blast out using that also for the. Uh, No, just uh, we have permission to pursue this and coordinating with the other surveys that are going up. I'm seeing a lot of head shaking again, so I'm going to let the yeah. director know the council needs to be getting their presentation. Yeah, it's in the, it's, I'll, re, I'll report back on that. How about that? It's, okay. in, it's in our planner's hands right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well. Oh, that's it. I thought I was very good, but I didn't recognize it. You know, the bus? <laughs> they had to run one of them. All right. Uh, buildings and grounds report. Uh, we create three students in the field house for the girls' locker room as an apparent leak. We had our HVAC company out to be charged the unit and added die to help locate the location of the leak. They will follow up after the unit has the time to operate and hopefully pinpoint the exact location. Parson report. Parson will be providing the borough with a full report of all the school mains that were videoed. After reviewing this report and the findings, the next step would be to address all the sewer mains that show signs of stress fractures and cracks to be scheduled to be repaired by either relying those sections of the sewer main or completely missing. That's the all for my report. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you, Kevin. Um, for me this evening, I'll follow up with what you just stated, the cannabis survey. It is completed. It was presented to council. Um, there were no real comments made back from Bill that I've been made aware of. So it's in our planner's hands to put into a survey monkey for us, both English and Spanish. And we will have a month time frame once we push it out. And they will get the survey for us, the survey monkey. You have months and then. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Task force will. Okay. Thank you. It's okay. Now the task force will then do the analysis, et cetera. And then there's a couple of comments back. Regarding the Denel and Station development, um, I'll just planning board uh, was presented and having a packet. I just wanted to make the council uh, aware uh, that the planning board gave approval for the retail space to the zoning matter to have a drive through because it is allowed on that property to set the zone. Um, they have a proposed bank that they're negotiating a lease with. They stated publicly at the meeting, so I will state it. Also, the Foundry Bank. Um, they tell you in the banking world, so it's a fairly up and coming uh, millennial type of bank. Um, so, it just basically the change, they, nothing was changed to the aesthetics of the building. It was just a difference of squeezing the footprint in a little bit and pushing it out towards the back. So, you have all that documentation. To the public, it will be on the redevelopment section of our website underneath the Denel and Station Art Color Project. So that's just making the council aware of that. Uh, fire department, I just want the public and council to be aware. We have the estimated uh, cost in for the market test. Um, the professionals are reviewing them, well, they will be reviewing them. And then in July, I'm making it publicly known now, given the appropriate time frame based upon our, our sunshine laws, um, we're going to we're going to call a special meeting to include the architect based upon the committee and our QTA's recommendation for architects we get this project. So I just want you to be aware. In the upcoming week or two, you will be having a meeting to vote on the architect and be prepared to get the appropriate place. Um, questions on that before I move on to my report? Would that be the only thing? Um, that would be the goal. So, <laughs> um, let's maybe a redevelopment. Um, so regarding COVID, I'm still reporting on our vaccination rates. I have an update from the governor's office. Not the best response, but it's still a response. Um, so for Denali's vaccination rates, um, it's at least one dose. For at least one dose, all ages is 82 percent. 5 through 11 is 35 percent, 5 and over is 90 percent, 12 through 17 is 77 percent, 12 and over is 97 percent, 18 and over is 99 percent, 30 and over is 96 percent, and 65 and over is 109 percent. Now the answer for that is uh, vaccine courses completed in percentages all ages 71 percent, 5 through 11, 30 percent, 5 and over, 78 percent, 12 through 17, 69 percent, 12 and over, uh, 85%, 18 and over, 86%, 30 and over, 85%, 65 and over 98%. So I have been in correspondence with the governor's office. I know council member Dunn showed concern on this regarding the over 100% in the 65 and over for at least one dose. Um, so they did reach out to me and they believe the increase in percentages is due to uh, possible out of town individuals having been vaccinated inside the Nellon. Uh, being added to our overall vaccination rate. Um, so they're confirming this with the state department of health, uh, and we'll follow back up with more information. And just the following this, so you have a right to so, um, New Jersey COVID information you can find on covid19.nj.gov. Uh, regarding the Lincoln Avenue project, uh, concrete work is nearly complete on the first two blocks. Contractors topsoil and disturbed areas and restoring driveways before we proceed with further concrete work. Uh, the storm sewer pipe is installed, waiting uh, delivery to the one and three cast inlet. Uh, scheduling tree removal, uh, subcontractor, uh, this will proceed uh, this week or next week. Uh, replacement trees will be reviewed by the Shade Tree Commission, so everyone's inter 
not just being displaced by random trees. Um, the borough is working with our engineers to make sure that the contractor keeps the work area as clean as possible. This is something we've been made aware of that the contractors have not been have been not have been have not been as clean as they should be. Um, so if anyone feels there is an issue, please call Borough Hall at 732 968 3033 extension 3 so we can handle your concern as soon as possible. You can give me an email. We've been handling it. Um, so it's my understanding it's improved, but I just want to make sure you all make you aware we are aware of prior concern and we are working with the contractor to make sure it doesn't continue. New Jersey American Water Project, um, they've completed their water mains, water services, and new fire hydrant installation on all, all the streets for this year's project. Uh, Mill and paving is expected to start the week of July 18th for the following streets. Madison Avenue from First Street to Mountain View Terrace, Mountain View Terrace from Madison Avenue to North Washington Avenue, Fourth Street from Third Street to Washington Avenue, Third Street from Fourth Street to Washington Avenue. Mm -hmm. The following streets in the New Jersey American Water uh, Project will be paved within the next 45 days. Washington Avenue from 1st Street to Mountain View Terrace, 200 blocks of Mountain View Terrace and 4th Street. Pulaski Street from North Avenue to the morning. I hear you waiting. I see you waiting for that new extension. It'll be done. 45 days. Uh, PSD&G Project. They'll continue their gas main and service in each home on 2nd Street and Schwartz Place, Middlesex. Uh, by September, PSEG should be paving the following blocks 800 block of 1st Street, 800 block of Denell Avenue, 700, 800 blocks of Front Street. Um, I just want the public to be aware of this. This is good. Um, the estimated mill, mill, mill and pave cost of roads being paid by our utility company. Company is over one million dollars for approximately three miles of road in the borough at no cost to our taxpayer. Uh, we have developed a great partnership with our utility companies over the past two years, along with passing an ordinance two years ago for road restoration that has gone a long way in ensuring these roads are safe curb to curb. Um, so, a lot of mileage, and there's, I believe, there are conversations for possibly more to come in the future. 88 ramps. We recently completed nine new 88 ramps at various locations for streets that will be milled and paved by either a utility company or part of the county mill and pave project. Middlesex County Mill and Pave Project. Uh, we just received notification from Middlesex County informing us that the mill and pave project is, is expected to start around September 9th. Following streets will be mill and, milled and paved short way. Um, First Street from Schwartz Place to Madison Avenue because the remainder from Schwartz Place to the terminus is being done by TSDJ. Um, and Elm Avenue from Schwartz Place to Madison Avenue. Um, and that's again in the other section of Elm Avenue is being done by the utility company. Um, I do want to note, I believe I noted this in a prior meeting, uh, the block of Front Street between Sanford and Madison as it turned out to be too low of a road grade for them to be able to be mill and paid by the county. So we're working with our engineers to incorporate that into our client place project and get funds that way. So just so you're aware, it's going to get done. It just has to be a different means of getting it done. Uh, Greenbrook Trash Trap. On June 26, we met with the Lower Raritan Watershed Project and showed them three possible locations for the trash trap. Now, this is good because we're not, we don't have to spend the money. There's a pilot grant that believes that these things will cost over $30,000, so it's good that we got it free. Uh, a key part of the location is easy access to the trash trap to remove the debris. The possible locations were Jefferson Avenue, spot of that old bridge, I think they call this the Silver Bridge, Washington Avenue uh, before the bridge, and Madison Avenue before the bridge. Uh, so between the borough and Lower Raritan Watershed Project, um, we feel that Jefferson Avenue location would be best location of the project because there's utility companies that give us accessibility to that area. So the next step will be meeting with the DCP and the installation company to review and finalize the locations with that DEP. Uh, we look forward to this initiative to assist the in keeping the Green Brook team. But the now station, as you know, and you may notice, the traffic signal at the intersection of South Washington Avenue and New Market Road began construction last week. Uh, this project is estimated to be completed in August. 
Um, I'm just correcting that because I know in a, in a prior public posting I noted uh, end of July, but it, it will most likely be August, so I just want to correct that for the record. In addition, uh, do not lock boxes uh, marking will be added shortly thereafter at the intersection of Columbia Street and South Washington Avenue. So residents back there have access to their houses and don't have to worry about traffic jamming up. Um, NJDOT grant applications, um, they were submitted uh, on June 30th for the, the deadline. So hopefully we can get some money from the state. Um, digital signs, you may have noticed there was an improvement to the Washington Memorial Park sign at the corner of First Street and North Washington Avenue. Uh, the borough of Denellis improved the sign by making it digital while also respecting the aesthetics of the sign's initial structure and the park and the park itself. Uh, this improvement has already been public has already been publicly praised, praised for an enhanced uh, form of communication. So thank you to the governing body for approving the digital sign and for bringing the borough into the 21st century. Um, 12th district, our congressional representative, uh, mobile office. So I've been in communication with our with Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman's office about setting up a mobile office this year. They've done it in the past, so we're looking to do it again at the library. Uh, more information to come as the details are worked out. Uh, Master Plan Reexamination Steering Committee. I promise you, this is my last one. Um, recently, I held a call with DMR, who is our our planners. Um, and the complete streets and NJ Transit friendly teams from NJTPA and NJ Transit. These are assistant, technical assistant grants we got from both organizations uh, to coordinate our efforts on the master plan re exam and the climate resiliency plan with the NJTPA complete streets and NJ Transit friendly planning. Uh, we agreed that it would be best to postpone the release of the survey for the master plan re examination, which was supposed to be in July. So we're, we're agreed that we should postpone it to August and schedule a community engagement meeting in September. Uh, so this would allow us to include questions in the survey that the other planning teams have otherwise included in their own surveys, their own separate surveys. Uh, the September meeting is planned to feature information relating to complete streets, NJ transit friendly planning, the master plan re exam, and climate real resiliency information prior to a final and formal presentation of all the planning uh, uh, initiatives to the mayor and council, which will occur later in the fall. Uh, joining these efforts will not only help the public understand the connection between the borough's planning work and transit transportation, but will also avoid, as we noted earlier, uh, survey and meeting fatigue the public might experience if there were separate surveys and meetings for each of them. We're combining efforts. And all the efforts are planning and they coordinate well with the master plan here at camp, regardless. So it, it works out that for planning efforts. Okay, that's it for me. Department heads that are in the room. Anything to report? Any comments or questions? No? Okay. So at this moment in time, we will open our, our meeting to the public for any comments or questions, state your concerns. Um, just please state your name and address. That's what we we'll request. So the floor is the public right now. Yes, sir. Extension. Is there any uh, update on the real transportation? Uh, green, uh, yeah, I think there's two things that we've done. First off, I've reached out uh, on several occasions since, since you and I, of course, the last meeting where you came forward. I'm getting the same response or lack thereof that I've got here when we're dealing with the easement. So uh, if they're not if they're not able to get back in touch with us on the subject matter of the council potentially consider other avenues to get their attention. Separately, um, I've done some research and I believe that we're going to be able to work to help out with the problems that have been reported by residents on your plot. And I think there is a uh, statute that we can enforce that will put an end to the idling at all hours of the night. There's a limitation on the amount of time that, that uh, they can be out idling on any particular vehicle, so we're going to, uh, I'll be speaking to the police department about that and potential enforcement issues that may arise. During the ordinance of parts and large commercial vehicles, there's, not, there's no such ordinance on North Avenue Extension. We've had people get tickets here before, guys, or some truck tickets. Well, 
Which ordinance are you referring to? Are you, you're talking uh, about apartment like tractor trailers and commercial vehicles. Commercial vehicles. Yeah. Commercial. We do have an overnight ordinance. Well, we've had trail tractors in the part of the 634 North Edison extension for 11 days. I don't even live there. I've been there for 11 days. Yesterday, we had a call with police. We had a wonder for over two hours. Stop it now. Don't we'll shut it off. Right. So we'll speak to the police and see what we can do with the president. There's another guy there who taxes like a milk truck type thing. Taxes in his driveway overnight, watching the sidewalk. Do you have the address for that? That's like 621. Uh, if you can find out the address of that, not Mr. Robinson, the urban administrator. Where we do about that. All right, thank you. In fact, if you cast on both addresses, one way the truck has been there for the length of time, and then this other one, Let's try to do something about it. Thank you, Mr. Green. Chief, do you have any other comments here? Uh, any other comments or questions from the public? I have one comment. Yes. Yeah. Ellen Kelly, Kelly by 19 Lincoln Avenue. I'm sitting here looking at all the pictures of the mayors. Mayor Rogers, I moved here and he was mayor. He ran as a Democrat, he ran as a Republican, and he ran as an independent. Very interesting, very bright guy. Larry Ann Davino, interesting. Uh, served a long time. Always had credit to the sewage authority that he said was money and never converted to anything, just credit. But interesting. John Gibney, he's still around. What I'm saying is though. Uh, all the years I've been coming here for the different mayors, I congratulate the mayor. He's a very productive mayor. I've sat with all of those mayors. And uh, you're very productive. I may not always agree with you, but I just said you're very productive and you do a lot for the town, so I thank you, sir. Kelly, coming from you, that means a lot. And I am a believer that the world goes round when we have disagreements, but we should have compromise too. So I I'd like you to thank you for that. Go on. Great little town. You it is. But you Good to see you here again. Any other comments from the public or compliments? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Without hearing any other comments from the public, which we thank, uh, I don't believe we have an executive session tonight, so we can call for it on the Motion of adjournment. Move it. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. I'm waiting for the day that someone says nay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>